Good evening, and welcome to tonight's edition of the Weekly Investigator. I'm Bobby Burkwater. And I'm Jackie Wright. Our story of the week, young basketball star Jamie Wakefield has been dreaming to rewrite the history books. Tonight, she attempts to make it one million consecutive three-point shots. It's now been over two weeks, and she has yet to miss. Our own Fozzie Fitzberg is live on location at Tuxbury Gymnasium in Dearborn, Michigan. Let's go to him now. Fozzie? Well, I tell you what, Bob and Jackie, we're live here from Tuxbury Gymnasium on what could quite possibly become a record-breaking event. The young shooting sensation behind me has come to be known as Jump Shot Jamie Wakefield. She's been shooting baskets for some two and a half weeks now without a miss. And if she can continue on with this kind of consistency, she's expected to break the record within the hour with her one millionth shot. We'll keep you posted. For now, from Tuxbury Gymnasium, I'm Fozzie Fitzberg. Back to you, Bob and Jackie. Thanks, Fozzie. What an exciting event, Bob. She's a phenomenal shooter, isn't she? But how does a shooter like Jamie evolve? I had the opportunity earlier this week to find out exactly what makes someone a three-point expert in your face, nothing but net, dead-eye shooter. I'm standing right now in the small town called The Furs. It borders on the wild woodlands of western Washington, where several sightings of the dead-eye shooter have been seen and documented. Today, we are going out to try to capture that rare species. Our journey began with a lengthy hike through the dreary backwoods. I have to admit, it was no easy trip. The techniques that Lone Wolf used to hunt the Deadeye were like nothing I've ever seen. Whether we were crawling through the muck in disguise or using a variety of Deadeye calls, it seemed we were always one step behind. He's close. I smell him. That's how I know. City boy. Gray Feather, we just missed him. I'm coming to get you! Dead eye shooter. We had to turn to alternative methods, but we finally had a sighting. It was time for the capture. Today, after an aggressive hunt, we have both trapped and caught the dead-eyed shooter. But that is just the first part of our adventure. The bricklayer, as he's called, was expected to be a much simpler hunt. This species is far less active and is known for its poor shooting technique. Right now, we're setting the trap for the bricklayer. And what do we use? Twinkies. You'll notice the gridlock pattern that the lone wolf is setting right now. Go Bruins, go Bruins. Right. It was indeed an easy task. A tasty trap was rigged up with the expertise of Lone Wolf. It worked to perfection. 
After capturing both the Deadeye and Bricklayer shooters, we are now going to scientifically break down the differences between these two species. We now go to the scientific research lab of Dr. Wiggins in Springfield, Illinois. As I began the fascinating process of researching and contrasting and comparing these two very different species, I discovered two different properties that seem to separate them. The first separating property is the physical elements, and the second separating property is the mental elements. Let's examine the physical elements first. There are nine defining features of the Deadeye Shooter's physical stance. I like to call them keys, the nine keys of Deadeye Shooting. The Deadeye Shooter has a strong base. His feet are shoulder width apart and his strong foot is slightly forward. His knees are bent. Why? Because that is where the strength of the Deadeye Shooter's shot comes from. Notice the position of the elbow. This is crucial to the Deadeye Shooter's shot. It is over the knee and under the ball. As we examine the position of the shooting hand, you will notice that in the wrist there are wrinkles. What did I say? Wrinkles. Not Pringles, not Kris Kringles, but wrinkles. The Deadeye Shooter's non-shooting hand, or guide hand, is positioned on the side of the basketball. His thumbs are in the formation of an extended T. The basketball rests on the finger pads of the Deadeye Shooter's shooting hand. Notice the basketball does not touch the palm of the hand. The Deadeye Shooter demonstrates unbelievable concentration. His eyes zero in like a radar on the target. I have discovered that from whatever position the Deadeye Shooter is shooting from on the court, he is lined up with one of these rings on the rim, and his eyes are locked in on these rings as his target. But sometimes the Deadeye Shooter prefers to shoot a bank shot, in which case he places an imaginary X on the backboard as his target. Most striking about the Deadeye Shooter's shot is his consistent follow through. It reminds me of when I was a wee little lad at Grandma's house. She used to bake the most delicious cookies and place them in a cookie jar on top of the counter. And being a short boy, I would have to stand and reach as high as I could, as high as I could over the edge of the cookie jar for one of those delicious morsels. Mm -mm. <clears throat> ah. uh, notice how the uh, Deadeye Shooter's follow-through is in the cookie jar formation every time. Now, let's examine the Bricklayer's stance. Notice he is the antithesis, the opposite of the Deadeye Shooter. His stance is poor, with his toes pointed inward. His knees, although bent, are knock-kneed, obviously not a good stance for strength of shooting. His shooting form is horrendous. Every shot is haphazard and inconsistent. His body flails at awkward, unathletic angles. Notice the elbow, the lack of follow-through, the lack of concentration. No cookie jar here. In the final analysis, there remain nine keys which separate the Deadeye Shooter from the Bricklayer. When we return, more shocking discoveries on this edition of the Weekly Investigator. Welcome back to the Weekly Investigator. Let's get another live update from Fozzie Fitzberg on Jamie Wakefield's progress in Dearborn, Michigan. We're live here at Tuxbury Gymnasium where jump shot Jamie Wakefield is in pursuit of one million consecutive three-pointers made. Jamie, what's been the uh, toughest part about pursuing this record? Oh, well, right now my arms and legs are a little tired, but I 
there, but I'm trying to stay focused on my form. And I see the people are starting to gather and getting excited about this record. Is that going to be a distraction for you? Oh, no, I'm trying not to pay attention to the people and just, you know, stay focused on the basket. Do you have enough confidence in yourself that you're going to be able to make it all the way? Oh, I'm very confident. This is something I've been working for for a long time. Well, there you have it. Jump shot Jamie Wakefield will be shooting that one millionth shot shortly. We'll bring it to you as it approaches. For now, back to you at the studio. Thanks, Fozzie. And now the conclusion of our investigative report on the Deadeye Shooter. In an effort to further differentiate the differences between the Deadeye Shooter and the Bricklayer, I was compelled to examine such physical traits as body fat composition, reaction time, muscle tone, Brain density. Reaction time rating T minus three seconds, and it's a go. Abdomen is bloated and rotund. Fat clamps, please. Adipose tissue rating at approximately 50%. We have hair and hair and some earwax. By far, the most fascinating discovery of the day was the mental differences between the Deadeye Shooter and the Bricklayer. To adequately examine and appreciate these mental differences, it was necessary to temporarily remove the brains of the two species. Let's take a look at the Bricklayer's brain. As you can see, the brain often resembles a brick. It's hard and atrophied through lack of stimulation. Um, oftentimes this happens through uh, watching a lot of TV and eating a lot of junk food. Um, if you notice that on this side where the normal uh, temporal lobe would be, you have a flat area and the flat area has really been caused by uh, an I can't attitude. I can't make this shot, I'm no good, I'm fat, I'm ugly. Those types of thoughts really contribute to the flat area here. Now what we're going to do is hook up our, our brain monitor here and we're going to see what's inside, what goes on inside the brain of the bricklayer. Well, as you can see, no activity expected. Nothing but static in the brain of the bricklayer. Watch the fluid. In the healthy brain of the dead eye shooter, you basically have two hemispheres. The right hemisphere is responsible for discipline, for character, for confidence. It's the I can, I will, I shall make this shot hemisphere of the brain. The left hemisphere is responsible for trajectory, spacing, distance, accuracy. The two hemispheres interact through the corpus callosum, and when all the neurons are firing, the shots generally go in. Now let's take a look on the inside of the shooter's brain and see what we find with our brain monitor. I'm a great shooter. I can. I will. I shall. Be great. I can hit the J, man. It's nothing but net. Bottom of the net, baby. It's all twine. It's me. I can get it done. I gotta go. I gotta get after it. I gotta really work hard. I gotta be intense. I gotta get it done. Nobody can beat me. They can't beat me. I'm the man. I'm gonna get it done. Come on, baby. Confidence. It's going in. It's going in. Soft, sweet, swish. There it is. Oh, yeah. As one can see, there's more to a great jump shot than meets the eye. The Deadeye Shooter is both sound mentally and physically and uses proper technique and self-discipline to perfect a shot. From the Furs, I'm Bobby Burkwater. Bobby, I was really impressed how you handled the challenges of the wilderness. Thanks, Jackie. If it wasn't for Lone Wolf Mertlick, I would have never made it out alive. The exceptional skills of the Deadeye don't have to be elusive. You too can be a great shooter as well. If you're serious about developing your own dead-eye shooting, a great way to get started is with the Fred 42. Fred's 42 is a workout that was designed and developed by Fred Kroll, president and founder of NBC Camps. There are three components of Fred's 42. The first component is a warm-up. I want swishes. I want swishes. Soft. Think soft. Think confidence. Think soft. Think confidence. You're moving around. You can do this individually or with a partner, it doesn't matter. Okay, keep working out. Once you make three in a row, you just keep working out. Good job. Good. Once you're warmed up and you have a good sweat going, it's time to move to phase one of Fred's 42. 
Good. Hard cut, hard cut. Turn and curl. Hit him. Now to there. Curl. Beautiful. Curl. Come to ready to catch. Ready to catch and shoot. During ready phase shoot. one, there's seven different spots to shoot from. Each spot is about 15 feet from the basket. It's important to develop this mid-range jumper before you step out and start shooting three-pointers. Free throw line, free throw line, free throw line, free throw line. There. Now back down to there. Good, you've only missed one time. Make one shot from each position. If you miss, no big deal. Just keep moving. Curl. Good. Work towards shooting game speed, but don't sacrifice form. Now it's time to play Fred's 42. There are still seven positions on the floor, but now they're beyond the three-point line. From each of the seven positions, you're going to take three different types of shots. The first shot is a three-pointer. The second shot is an offensive move followed by a mid-range jumper. The final shot is an offensive move followed by a drive all the way to the basket. You get a certain amount of points for every shot that you make. If you make your three-pointer, you get three points. If you make the mid-range jumper, you get two points. If you make the drive all the way to the basket, you get one point. Therefore, there's a potential of six points from each spot. Since there are seven spots, there is a total of 42 points possible. 17 for 24. Twenty-three for thirty. Doing a great job. Money. Twenty-nine for thirty-six. Boy, we got If you get thirty, we think we did great. Oh, he's on a roll, ladies and gentlemen. You guys watching this video gotta get excited. He got thirty-four. He's 35 for 42. Stop. Game. There's more than one way to become a Deadeye shooter. Dr. Shan Furch, a Deadeye himself, now shares his workout. This is a, a workout that's meant to be used over the course of a number of years, not just for a month or two at a time. So. I started when I was a sophomore in college using this workout, and then I pursued this workout all the way through my senior year in college. The best thing about it is it helped me remain confident as a shooter and build myself as a shooter in a relatively short amount of time. And this would be used in addition to a lot of other working out, like weightlifting and strength training, jump training, and additional shooting. But this is one that focuses the shooting effort and keeps it in a game-like context. The first component of the workout is a five minute section in which you're just focusing on the nine keys of shooting and you're right around the rim in a five to seven foot area, just focusing on the nine keys, just getting warmed up a little bit, jogging around, shooting jump shots, focusing on things that you need to make yourself a better shooter. Myself, I, I tried to learn what were the, the top three things that really threw my shot off when I wasn't shooting well and then I'd make sure I focused on those additionally and for me it was make sure that I had a strong base. Instead of fading to the right or to the left or forward or back, jumping straight up and down, and making sure that I had my elbow in was another big one for me and still is, and then making sure that I focused on the follow through. There are these five total sections the first one being the warm up section, the second one being shooting jump shots from 15 feet and in off of moves, the third one being jump shots from 15 feet and in off of the pass, and the next section being on the three point line, making moves and shooting your jump shot. And the last one being three-point line off the pass. So that, that's the entire workout. And once you're inside each section, each 10-minute section, there are a few things that, that come to mind. First of all, setting a goal for a number 
that you would like to make during that 10 minutes. When I first began the workout, it was given to me by one of my coaches at Montana State University. And it was very simple. I wanted to make five in a row off the dribble and off of attack moves from the 15 foot area. I wanted to make five in a row off the pass from the 15 foot area. Three in a row from the three point line area off the dribble and off of attack moves. And three in a row from the three point line off the pass. So by the time I was a senior, uh, the numbers that I was using were 19 in a row off the attack dribble from 15 foot line, 19 in a row off the pass from the 15 foot line, 17 in a row from the three point line off the dribble, 17 in a row from the three point line off the pass. So that gave me a lot of confidence as a shooter because I knew every day, basically every day, I was making 17 in a row from the three point line twice during my workout. So then when I got to a game that night, I had a lot of confidence when I would step up the line and shoot a three pointer. And again, your goal is you set a certain number that you want to get to as far as makes in a row. And if you get those, let's say I have my goal was five in a row from that area. If I get to five in a row, then I don't have to shoot for the rest of that 10 minutes. I just move to the next section. So that you get a reward system as well during this workout. And sometimes if you're on fire, you maybe get, get done with the workout in a very short amount of time, maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes. That just means you have to move up your numbers the next day. And that, that's great, that's a good reward. You're going to be going hard the entire time. For the entire four 10 minute sections, you're going to be going as hard as you can. And you want to be in a situation where you're shooting game speed, making game type moves, and going fast. The entire workout is meant to be done at game speed while you're doing the moves. And when you're not doing the moves, then you jog in between. Up next, we'll join Jamie Wakefield's shot at 1 million right after these messages. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Weekly investigators Fozzie Fitzberg is standing by as young Jamie Wakefield is about to go for a world record 1 million straight three-point baskets. Fozzie. We're live here where jump shot Jamie Wakefield is just a matter of shots away now from 1 million consecutive three-pointers made. Let's watch the last five. Folks, history has been made. Jump shot Jamie Wakefield has just made one million consecutive three-point baskets. The celebration is certain to last well into the night. It just goes to show you that hard work, persistence, and good fundamentals really do pay off. Live from Tuxbury Gymnasium, I'm Fozzie Fitzberg. Back to you, Bob and Jackie. Wow, that's amazing. High five, Jackie. They're celebrating tonight in Michigan. For Jackie Wright, I'm Bobby Burkwater. This is Weekly Investigator. See you next week. Good night. I'm standing right now in the small western village town, <laughs> village town city. <laughs> city. <laughs> Practice and self-discipline. Reporting from the first, yeah, it stinks! Uh, first do the glycoma glycogen test. Just a second. <laughs> Just give me one sec, okay. I'm ready now. Sorry. <laughs> okay, here we go. Glycogen test on the cerebral spinal. I swear, it's just two of us. Okay, here we go, NBC. <laughs> here we go, NBC. <laughs> Hey you guys. <laughs> hey Jen. This is so hard what he's doing to me. <laughs> hey you guys. <laughs> like when you bust that line, it scars easily and stuff. 
don't know what I'm doing, I don't even really pay attention. <laughs> Stomach is rotund and bloated. <laughs> it's because you use new lines on me every time, Charles. <laughs> Stomach is bloated and rotund. Fat clamps, please. <laughs> <laughs> is bloated and rotund. Uh, fat clamps, please. Get a hold of this ad post and see what we got. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mike, this is the last time, Mike. Got it. I, you know, I, my trick was to breathe heavy in my nose. <laughs> I was like, thanks, dude. Reaction time rating T minus three seconds. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a great shooter. I can, I will, I shall, I'd be great. I would, yeah, that stinks. Okay. Lone Wolf, how do you know he's close? <laughs> <laughs> that was good though, Raj. Lone Wolf, how do you know? <laughs> Wolf, how do you know he's close? I smell him. That's how I know. City boy. The <laughs> shooting sensation attempts to break the world record. That's tonight on the NBC Weekly Investigator News. <laughs> That's tonight on NBC. I don't, I'm leaving. <laughs> Gizman asks, am I starting? Can I just Whenever do it? You can go anytime. Yeah, okay. <laughs> As a young basketball sensation chases an NBC world record. <laughs> <laughs> I do I was the NBC? <laughs> Good evening and welcome to tonight's... Jeez. Am I going to puberty or what? Yeah. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to tonight's edition of the Weekly Investigator. I'm Bobby Burkwater. And I'm Jamie Wright. Jackie. <laughs> Good evening. Oh, please, Lord. Good evening and welcome to tonight's edition of the Weekly Investigator. I'm Bobby Burkwater. And I'm Jamie. Gosh, dang it. I don't want to be Jamie. I was really impressed how you handled the challenges of the wilderness. Thanks, Jackie. I'll tell you, if it wasn't for Lone Wolf, I don't know how we would have made it through. I especially like the part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't have to catch it on the story. Wow, that's amazing. High five, Jackie. They're celebrating tonight in Michigan. For Jackie Wright and Bobby Burkwater, thanks for joining us on Weekly Investigator. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, Bob, and the whole crew.